Hello people and welcome to Finance Skills Hub. Here we learn, we connect and we grow. In this short video, we continue our series on Excel's dynamic array formulas. You know dynamic array formulas allow you to calculate and then return several values at a time instead of one value, one cell. It has also improved the way we used to lock rows and columns when we were calculating in Excel. In this short video, we want to use a case study on capital allowance to walk through how you can use dynamic arrays to calculate smoothly and quickly in Excel. So if you are again join me, open your Excel and let's get started. Okay, so this is our schedule and the row you have here, that's row three, contains the total cost for all our assets for each year. So 2024 is 100, 200, 300 in that order. Now, the capital allowance is to help us allocate a certain portion of the total cost for each year. Okay, so for 100, it means we are going to take 20 for five years and then we just exhaust that. Then we move to 200, 5, and so on. Right, we want to create that kind of calculation over here, okay, in this gray area. So if you visually look at this, it means that when I calculate correctly, in this first year, 2024, this is going to be 20, okay? And then the next five is one, two, three, four, five, right? So this is going to exhaust this first 100. So starting in 2025, this is also going to be 40, right? And then the next one comes in. So there's something like a waterfall, okay? Now, how do we create this with just one formula? That is what dynamic arrays allow you to do. But before we do that, I want to take you to the regular way we used to do this. Then you appreciate the gap. Then I'll come in with a simpler approach with dynamic arrays. Okay, so let's proceed. Now, the rule is we need two conditions, okay? And because of that, I'm going to use if okay, and introduce and. And allows me to hold more than one logical conditions. The first rule is this, that if this year, 2024, is greater than or equal to this one on my left, first condition, right? So I'll bring my comma. And then the second rule is that if I take that year on my left and then I add five years to this, okay, that's going to give me 2029. It should be greater than this number that I have here, okay? So if these two conditions are met, that is what I'm posting in my hand okay then what i want is that this hundred that you have here should be divided by the capital allowance period which gives us 20. otherwise it should give me zero okay so this is a regular way we do things okay so the expectation is that this should give me 20. so after getting the 20 i cannot just copy right and down okay because i need to lock some of the cell references okay so to do that in the normal way, I now have to take each of the references. Okay, so first let's start with the F7. I want row seven to be first. So I'll put the dollar sign F4, F4 in front of row seven, that's for F7. Then for E8, I'm going to lock this on the column side because I want column E to be static. Same with this one, okay. Then F4 would reference this capital allowance period, which I want to lock absolutely, okay? And then this F7, again, I don't want the row seven to shift down, so dollar sign again seven, right? And then for my 100, now there's a tricky part. I'll come and explain this later, but for now, I want to leave this as a relative reference, okay? And then I will lock F4 this way, okay? So if I do this and I press enter, at least it allows me to copy to the right. But the catch here is that at this point, it's still supposed to be calculating on the 100. It shouldn't be shifting from 100 to 200. And that is what is happening here. It is because I didn't lock the original F3. So instead of sticking to this original 100 for the five years, it has now shifted to 200. Okay. It then means that there's something not right with this orientation. Okay, because if I lock it anyhow, I still cannot find a way to make the 100 stay as I copyright and down. 
right? The best orientation for this is not horizontal, but this should be actually in a vertical way. Okay, so let's try that. So what I'm going to do is when it comes to this point, which is the cost for each year, I'll choose to transpose. So transpose is one of the new functions in Excel. Okay, so equal to transpose, right? And then I'll just select these numbers. If your cost range is longer, then you might as well select everything. Okay, so when I do that, you notice that the orientation now is no more horizontal but vertical, right? This one allows me to just lock the 100, use it for the five years, and then switch to the 200, okay? So for this purpose, even though this is a dynamic array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just reference this here, okay? And then lock this at column level so that the D doesn't move with me. Okay, so when I just when I do something like this, I can now copyright. Okay, control R. So 20 is exhausted. If I come down here, control D, you notice that 40 now picks 200 and then runs it for five years. 60, right? So that is my waterfall. And at this point, if I want to sum, okay, I can now run my sum okay, on this range. Okay, and then maybe copy it to the right. So this will now give me the total capital allowance for each period. Okay, so that is a regular way. We have to lock the cells, okay, rearrange the values and all those things. So now let's introduce dynamic arrays. All these things improve the dynamic arrays because we can, with just a single formula, be able to spell these calculations at a go. You don't have to worry about the locking and the transpose and all that. So let me show you how that will work. So let me delete this, right? So the same formula, so equal to if, then we introduce our and, right? So this time around, instead of selecting just 2024, I'm going to select the entire array. So I'm going to select the whole of this and then compare it with the years on the left. So I check if this is greater than or equal to this, these years on the left, right? That was the first logic. Okay. Then I'll bring a comma and then test for the second condition. Second condition was that if I add five years, okay, to this one and then compare it with these ones, okay, it should be greater than the ones above. Okay. So that is the second condition. Okay. Now I'll close this for the end. Now, if these return true, then I want to divide by the cost and then the capital allowance. But before that, I have to transpose, right? So I'll take the transpose directly in the formula to transpose these numbers, okay? And then divide this by the capital allowance, which is five. Notice that I've not applied any dollar sign to lock row or column, right? Then I'll conclude with my false value, which is zero, and then close my bracket. Now, when I press enter, I'm not going to get the value because of this AND. The job of this AND is to return a true if all the conditions here are true. Okay, so if it is not true, then you realize that you will rather pick the false value instead of transposing to divide by the capital allowance. If I test this logical test, you realize that there's a false value here and that is how come it is not executing. So we can make a little modification. What we actually need are the actual values, not the true or false outputs, okay? So I'm going to modify this a bit. I'm going to take off the AND, okay? And then use regular Boolean, okay? So take off this AND, then multiply each condition. So I'll take this, okay? And then multiply this also by that, okay? So if I leave it like this, then list logical test now returns a series of ones and zeros. Okay, and then I have my transpose over here and then my value of if false is zero. Okay, so let's see what this gives us. So this actually now gives us the original calculation that we had. Okay, so the twenties go all the way, finish, we step down to the forties and all that. So even with this formula, we can make it simpler by taking off the if. So in that case, we'll just strictly be multiplying the condition that will return one and zero, and then we'll just multiply it by the division. 
Okay, so here to do that, I'm going to take off this if. Okay, so this first condition will multiply this. Okay, and then if it returns true is one, which will now be multiplied by this transpose. Okay, then I'll take off this final false value. Right, so the very simple version of this is what you see on your screen. So if I press enter, we get the same result. Now, you realize that, again, this formula relied on dynamic arrays. I didn't lock any row, any column. I was able to use transpose directly in the formula so that I don't have to rearrange my data and all that. That is the power dynamic array gives you. It's present in recent Excel versions. So if you have Microsoft 365 2021, then you should have dynamic arrays. Please practice and add it to your list of Excel tricks. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finance Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.